Hello, I am Dmitry Mendeleev and this is my periodic table. Ha! <laughs> you thought it was funny? Well, if you like chemistry jokes, you are right in your element. Hello, my name is John Fanger, and today I'll be discussing Galileo's principle of relativity and the advent of a heliocentric universe. I'm Alana from Boston College, and today we're discussing the role of Rosalind Franklin in the path to the double helix and why it's important to create an inclusive academic community in the sciences. I'm Luciano Frizzoco, and today we will be taking a deeper look into one of the key building blocks of all matter. Yes, that's exactly right. Today we will be taking a deep look into the history of atomic theory. Hey guys, it's Yayo from The Perspective Show, and today we will be talking about how a Greek scholar named Euclid figured out the wonders of the universe using some common notions and definitions, and why it's so foundational to the very present we live in today. I'm your host, renowned scientific historian Matthew D. O'Reilly. Today we explore one of the most consequential and controversial scientific figures of the 20th and 21st century, James Dewey Watson. So can we say without a doubt that alchemy was the direct forerunner of chemistry? No, not necessarily, but it's hard to say how chemistry as a scientific field would have developed without at least a nudge from alchemy. Hey everyone, my name is Ryan McGowan and today we are going to explore Aristotle's ideal of demonstration. Aristotle is one of the most influential and intellectual figures of Western history and established major milestones in the history of philosophy and science. Welcome to Weekend Update. I'm Luciano Frizzoco. And I'm Johnny O'Keefe. Let's first look at Aristotle. One of Aristotle's greatest contributions to science is his idea of the four elements. Ripping off the Nickelodeon show Avatar The Last Airbender, <laughs> he believed that the four elements are fire, water, earth, and air. I never understood how blurry my reality was until my alchemist suggested medieval cataract surgery. Medieval cataract surgery is the tried and true method pioneered by Amar al Masili to restore your eyesight at your convenience. In just 15 minutes, we extract the lenses out of your eyes using our state of the art hypodermic syringes developed by our team of physicians and psychics. A oh, seashell? Ooh. Wait, a seashell? That's a, that's a bunch of bull! Lodi, if I've ever seen any, I mean, a seashell must mean there's a beach here, but. Wait, a beach? Wait, I forgot my towel, but a beach! Oh, Let me see that fine specimen you got there. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Presumably, it appears we have made a discovery similar to that of Xenophanes back in 540 BC. In the beginning of Elements, books 1 through 6, Euclid starts out with basic assumptions and definitions. Now, let's say these five blocks are the definitions. For example, blocks one says, given two points, there is one straight line that joins them. Block two says, a straight line segment can be prolonged indefinitely. Block three, a circle can be constructed when a point for its center and a distance for its radius are given. Charles Lyell is often considered to be one of the greatest geologists of his time. His highly cited idea of uniformitarianism rocked the science world in the 19th century. <laughs> I can only imagine how annoying it would be going out with the boys every Saturday night. All night all you would hear is, yo boys, take a look at this. Isn't it awesome? It's a rock. <laughs> in other words, he had no friends. Hello everyone, I'm Fat Nguyen, a student of Perspective 4, the new scientific vision. And today I will be talking about the differences between Descartes and Bacon's methodologies in the scientific method. Many of you probably are very likely to have heard and learned about the scientific method, but perhaps you haven't heard about the great work that these two thinkers have contributed to it. And I am here to walk you through all of it. The Middle Ages were a golden age of discovery for Islamic thinkers. Avicenna alone is credited with writing over a hundred works on a vast number of topics such as geometry, music, logic, physics, philosophy, astronomy, and medicine. The Islamic thinker Abd al-Rahman al-Sufi wrote the Book of Fixed Stars, in which he laid out a comprehensive synthesis of stars based on Ptolemy's Almagest. Why do things the modern way, when you can do them the all-natural, anesthesia-free medieval way, and trust your sight to 10th century medicine? We've moved far beyond the 5th century BC method of striking the eye with a blunt object to dislocate the lens into the vitreous cavity. Thanks to medical advancements in the late Middle Ages Islamic Empire, we can suction out your cataracts with a hollow syringe. It's, it's live from Chestnut Hill!